welcome to another episode of Table Talks. I was going to try to think of the number. What's well, number 11? I have, don't even know how many, number 12. How many we are. So I just said another. <laughs> another episode. We're so glad that you're here. And I'm joined by my friends. Again, we have Clark, Pastor Ken, and Jody. And we're so excited to get into this conversation. But before we do, we have a which would you choose question. Basically, like a would you rather. Okay. So I'm going to shake them up. I'm going to give you... Your question, and you all have to answer, all right? Let's you have to be it. as honest as you can. All right. Which would you choose? You can remember every little detail of every day of your life, or you can remember your dreams vividly. You can remember everything about life, every little detail that's happened, or you can remember your dreams vividly. It's a tough one. Which would you choose? It's a tough one. I'm going to go with every detail. I think the pros outweigh the cons there. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely ups and downs to it, but I think the pros are are better. Yeah. I'll take that. I, I would choose actual things that happened as well because I'm not sure I want to remember all of my dreams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, there are things that I certainly would prefer not to remember, but it's also good because we learn from the hard yeah. things in life too. Mm -hmm. So I would rather remember everything. Mm. Well, then I better try something different here. Right, go <laughs> for it. The one thing I think about dreams is I've had a number of times where I've, like in the middle of the night, think that was really good. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning, I can't remember mm -hmm. what for it sure. So I'll try that one. Right. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with you guys too. I think I'd rather remember real life. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. dreams. Good. I have another one. Let's see. Every article of clothing you own is covered in fluorescent polka dots. So, Pastor Ken, you love that? <laughs> For sure. Or, <laughs> I preach. Or, every article of clothing you own is made out of spandex. <laughs> what was the first one? Just polka dots all I'm over. I'm a polka dot man. I've always been a polka I'm dot man. I'm taking polka dots as well. <laughs> yeah. oh. My body was not made for spandex. <laughs> yeah. I, I would choose polka dots. <laughs> all day. All right. Moving on. I will say COVID has made spandex really comfortable for the house, but yeah. not every day. <laughs> right, here we go. Do one more. Ooh, this one's, no, this one's kind of weird. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> You're a billionaire, but you only have 10 years to live. Or you're penniless, but you enjoy good health until 99 years of age. I'm taking the penniless all day. <laughs> I'm, I'm going penniless. Penniless, yeah. Yeah, I would go penniless too. Yeah, same. Good. Let's do one more because that one was uh, kind of a downer. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear you can hear colors. You uh, can hear colors. Yeah. All right. Like, There's like, actually a lady at our church, a young girl at our church that hears colors. Wow. That's awesome. Like. A real thing. I don't How does that work? Yeah. I, I don't know. They tried to explain it to me. It's above <laughs> yeah. me. Above my pay grade. Well, you can hear colors. Please tell us in the comments how yes. you do that. Or you can taste colors. Or like, oh, that tastes blue. I love that. Well, I guess I do that with Gatorade. It's yeah. like, yep. Gatorade tastes blue, right? Yeah. What flavor do you want? Blue. <laughs> you're asking which one do you want? Yeah, would you like, would like to taste begin, colors? I would like to begin hearing colors. Hmm. I'll take the taste. <laughs> I will take taste as well. Hmm. Why? Why is that? Because... The experience of tasting something is um, is unique. Like to hear it, mm. I guess you could hear it all the time, but to taste it, um, it's just a different encounter with the mm. the color. So, yeah. yeah, I feel like my my taste buds bring me b greater, bigger experiences than me listening to things. Huh. So I'm going. I'm going food. I don't know. You're a musician. Know. Maybe you want to hear. I mean, it. I really like yeah. food. Yeah, but yeah. I really enjoy. Like, you are my, my my taco kind of <laughs> Yeah, right. Johnny, where am I going? <laughs> the other thing I know. Street tacos. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of torn. Yeah. What are you, Pastor Ken? I I, I went with the hearing. Hearing. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I, I'm a guy. I'm just not thinking too. Deep. <laughs> Give me the second one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on the move on. Honestly, <laughs> honestly I'm done with this. So, <laughs> honestly. Oh, thanks, Pastor Ken. Yeah. Simple creature. The rule is yeah. you just answer as honestly as possible. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks for playing, even uh, if you didn't want to. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, let's move on to our actual topic oh, for today, and it's Christian sexuality. Uh, at the time that we filmed this, we're, we, we've done already like four sermons on it, I think. Three or four. About, about three or four. And I think it's been a blessing to the church. So I would love to hear from you guys. How has it been a blessing to you? And what have you heard from our congregation about them and mm. the way they've enjoyed it and the way that they've um, stepped into this conversation? 
Yeah, I think for me, the common thread would be that this is talked about in every other circle of community, be it a team or at work or friends. So people are really glad the church is talking really kindly but really boldly about, hey, here's what we think and here's why we believe this, looking at the Bible. And it's been really fun to watch people, like John is always talking about darkness and light in the gospel and also his epistles, of people confessing things that they were terrified and only receiving uh, accountability and positive feedback and support. Saying, like, how can we love you? How can we best support you? And watching the freedom, I have a couple guys in some of my groups that have literally, like, jumped off the ledge for Jesus. Like, I've dated this girl for five years, and what we're doing is not godly at all, and I'm realizing I need to follow Jesus, and they just put an ultimatum down. Like, Mm -hmm. you want to follow Jesus with me, and we can redo the way that we're doing our relationship? Let's go. Otherwise, we got to break up. That's like five years invested. Wow. So I was, I'm was i really proud of them. Mm-hmm. And I'm hopeful that the, the girlfriends will come along. But there's a lot of freedom and liberation when it comes to being able to take things from the darkness into the light. Yeah. And it's nothing but a gift. It's awesome. Yeah. What do you think, Jody? I just kind of playing off that, I think one of the things that's so beautiful about that kind of change is there's consequence to sin. And so whatever the sin is, and so when we're choosing to step into the light, mm-hmm. there's, there's actually freedom that comes instead mm-hmm. of loss, um, but we have to step into it to find it. And so yeah. I just think that's really beautiful. Um, I think I, I've really appreciated just the openness and the candidness of the conversations about what you guys have been teaching on. I think that it creates great conversation for families as they walk out. And so that's been a huge blessing Mm -hmm. that we can actually speak truth around Mm -hmm. it instead of tiptoeing around topics. We can actually speak truth to it. I'm really grateful that um, the second week, um, Clark, you taught on uh, shame and guilt and the difference of those two. Because I think as we have each one of these conversations, we need to keep going back to that. The enemy would like to shame us and and make that our identity where um, guilt is the Holy Spirit really challenging us to to change the way that we're doing things. And so, um, yeah, I think it's been a gift. Um, I've had some really good conversations Mm -hmm. around it. And, um, yeah, it's been it's been really good. Yeah. Blessing. Thank you, Jody. I'll give like three, four thoughts. Uh, One is that parents come up to me to tell me how glad they are that the church is talking about it because then the kids are right there in church, students, Mm -hmm. and they can go home and just say, let's talk. We Mm -hmm. just heard that. We talked. So it's a little bit less awkward and needed. Um, I lead with Mike Kim. We lead men. And so uh, on the week on porn, uh, it just led us to having just uh, no one needed to be ashamed for the fact that they're a man and they deal with lust. And they need God's help. Then you're leading into some in the body right here in the midst. We're dealing with porn. Had a guy just get up and testify mm. to how he has and how God is um, allowing him to walk in a whole new direction. Mm. So just great discussions and, and guys saying we're going to be for each other. Had older people in the church come up to me and just saying, I wish we could have talked about this when, mm. when I was younger because we we, this was not talked about. Mm-hmm. So older people appreciating it. Um, <clears throat> great discussions at homes. Kind of a fun story is <laughs> three, four different people came and brought their boyfriend or girlfriend for the first time, like high school age yes. students. <laughs> and then and their parents after were like, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, because then they could turn around and going, hey, we've got to yeah. talk about this. And, right. and, I got a funny story for you. <laughs> From the dating and cohabitation sermon, I was talking about the history of dating and how back, really around the time of courtship, even before that, if the family was really exciting and wanted to man and woman to get to know each other. They'd put each other overnight in the same room, but put them in potato sacks and zip tie them up so they can't do anything. After church on Sunday, one of my guys in my group went over to eat at his girlfriend's house, and at, on his chair was a huge potato uh, sack. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, he laughed. I mean, we all got a good laugh. That's great. That's funny. You know, I would say his future father-in-law, I think it will happen eventually, he kind of looked at him and gave him a wink like, uh-huh. that's for you, buddy. <laughs> I, something else really quickly, just on, on what you shared about cohabitation, that kind of thing on, on Sunday I thought was really good, is um, we look for permission to go to a point instead of looking to God for his desires for mm-hmm. us and yeah. how do we honor him in this relationship. And I just thought that was a really good um, point yeah. in there, too. I think what comes to... out of that, too, and we did it with our, our men the other night, it's just like, are we takers or yeah. are we blessers? Are we, are we givers? Who are we? Yeah. And that's, you know, that's kind of coming out of that. Yeah. 
That's nice. good. Yeah, for me, I've I've always appreciated when we do a kind of church wide series, just because it it gives parents talking points, it gives students yeah. interest uh, to come to church on Sunday mm-hmm. and to talk with parents about it. So and especially something like this, w- which is so needed and so necessary, um, is just another way for for us as Emmanuel to help families. Hey, we're co discipling. Like we're doing this together. Um, and we're going to try to provide as many tools as we can so you can have these open conversations. Um, because uh, from what I heard from students, is it's really hard to ask parents. And then as, as, a, as a parent, I can only imagine how hard it is to talk to your kid, right? Yeah. So being able to open this conversation like this. And now that I have a two-year-old, um, I feel that if we keep doing this, I feel really prepared uh, when the time comes for me to yeah. uh, start talking to my, to my daughter about... Uh, sexuality and with my wife um, as we talk to our kids about their bodies and what they were meant to do and the the way God had created them so just grateful that Mm -hmm. we were able to have this conversation openly respectfully and in a really loving way for sure Um, yeah yeah, as as leaders and as pastors as you guys prepare sermons and talks um, what do you think has been the the most challenging um, aspect of it so as you look at the Bible as you look at culture as Clark said we're talking to people. This is not concepts, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think has been the, the toughest or most challenging thing uh, as you prepare your talks, as you prepare your sermons? Um, um, I think the thing that I'm aware of is uh, the challenging part is that you can have some folks uh, be pharisaical and other people actually being a bit innocent and then not realizing how wide um, and challenging the issues can be. So uh, on the Pharisaical end, you can have a few folks who aren't aware of the depth of their sin in general. And when you know your own sin, it allows you to be gracious to other sinners who have different sins than you. Mm. So just aware of a few people that can kind of function that way and trying to help uh, people be protected from them and have them learn, you know, you're a sinner too. And then the other one is you can have people probably more, a little bit more on the female end that have just been pretty innocent in terms of uh, how, what they've kind of been about. Mm-hmm. And so that can, they can be a little bit thrown by the challenge that is out there that we deal in our culture. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. What did you say, Jody? I, um, so I think probably one of the difficult things even in having these conversations um, in truth and love is that our culture is polar opposite. It teaches polar opposite yeah. of what mm. we, what the Bible shows us. And so um, I was listening to a podcast and they had done some research and they asked what, how many dates do you wait before you have sex? And the typical, the average was three. And they said like guys would answer one or two, mm. f- females would probably answer six or seven. That is heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking mm-hmm. because that's what our culture says is acceptable. And so, um, so that means that there's, there's a lot of hurt, there's a lot of woundedness out there. There can be um, f- feeling judged or guilt or shame, shame mm-hmm. you know, that, that really, um, you know, we all need forgiveness, whatever our sin is. I, I just think the way that the culture presents sex, um, you know, it's, there's freedom in it, there's no strings attached, that, that is wrong. When you have sex with somebody, you are united to them. Mm-hmm. And that's what the Bible says. And so there's great responsibility and great um, commitment that comes with that. And so we can't just, we can't just use it flippantly yeah. and um, not have consequences to it. So, so I think our culture, um, I, had, I had somebody, this was years and years and years ago, say um, they had a, a daughter who was um, living with a gentleman that she was not married to. And, she, and so the mom said, well, the Bible was written for a long time ago. And it just mm-hmm. broke my heart because instead of really loving on her daughter and speaking truth to her daughter so that her daughter would reap the best from a relationship, mm-hmm. she excused it because that's what the culture said was okay. So culture, I think, yeah. is really hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would say for me, probably two things. One is actually like preaching and teaching to such a wide uh, congregation, mm-hmm. which yeah. is the beauty of Emmanuel, is we have people who have been in church for, I don't know, four or five, six generations. Then you have people come in who have never heard this before. And so a balance of here's God's word, here's like empathy, here's compassion, here's like just the grace and truth balance. 
uh, the other thing for me is I'm, I'm trying to do a, a better job of, I'm always saturated in the Bible, but also looking at data, mm -hmm. at social sciences, at a number of things that actually, in my opinion, are only confirming what the Bible has taught for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. But it's a sermon, not some like research project. Yeah. And I'm talking about people, not just numbers. And so always balancing that. And really a lot of the, the statistics that come out regarding sexuality and really anything outside the Bible are all pretty negative and detrimental. So then at the end of the sermon, offering hope and saying like the Romans 8, there's nothing that puts you outside of God's love and giving people not despair, but hope for it. You can heal, but it only comes in and through a relationship with Jesus. So we step into that and just making sure there's a balance of the seriousness of it, but also yeah. you know, it's not all dark. Step into the light and it can become a great gift. So, <clears throat> Yeah, for, for me, I would... I would uh, agree with um, all of you guys and I would say maybe probably two things one is uh, maybe even within the church as Christians we might not see the the Bible and what God has to say as uh, authority over our lives um, we might want to listen to what is pleasing to us and say all right I think I'll go with that instead yeah. uh, as I'm doing research and preparing one of the sermons on sex and technology uh, What's really funny is that all the the main players, all the people that are investing money and creating all these companies, um, they tie it around the bow of happiness. It's like mm. this is not about money, you know. This is not about this, about that. It's actually about you being happy, about you making yourself yeah. happy, about you making your partner happy, and this and that. And that's that's what we're going up against uh, <laughs> against people looking for their own happiness in that way yeah uh, so as i give a sermon i know that god's got it that i'm just god's instrument and god is the one that changes lives but we also have to be convincing for right sure so that's where uh, i totally agree with clark we have to be able to say the bible is authority this is what god has to say but let me tell you let me give you some like real life examples uh outside of what the bible says because you might not think that the bible is the authority over your life yeah. um so like i said Holy Spirit's got it. He's a, God is the one that changes lives. But we also have to be really convincing yeah. um, with our lives, with how we live, but also with our words and how we're preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, as we've done this series, I saw one family, I saw three families in our church that they've done a really good job of raising their kids. And their <clears> kids are now high school into college age. And they were gathered together after one sermon. And I walked up to him afterward, and I wanted the younger people to hear this. And they're really fine younger people. Mm -hmm. I said, your parents have actually protected you quite well. And if I had children your age, I'd say you can marry any one of them. Mm -hmm. Because as a person who's older now, you just watch, uh, sex can do a lot of damage to people. Uh, sex outside of marriage mm -hmm. can do a lot of damage. And people can be protected. So just kind of closing thing, our world... Our, you know, Billie Eilish, that young lady that now got caught into porn at this level of the time, Meg, trying to find sex the way the world tells us to do it versus the way God says to do it. God actually loves us, as Clark's been sharing, and we, he actually has a beautiful design, and we kind of can get destroyed in the world and mm -hmm. thinking it's going to be happiness, and it's actually destruction outside of God's way. Yeah, that's good. I think one final thing I would add, and it's a much longer conversation for another time, but as I'm reading the Bible and having lots of conversations, it's really astounding how all of us to some extent have bought into the lie that my body is one thing and I can do whatever, whether it's food or drink or shows or what I'm listening to or sexuality, and my spirit or soul is not affected by it, actually how integrated we are. And then if you look at what's ha up and coming, what, what's about to boom with tech is this metaverse is alternate universes where people are able to put on goggles and identify as different characters and they're creating different sensory things you can taste and touch and feel and it's not really me the arousal yeah it's not really me i'm i'm a deer in this this alternate reality and yeah i've got a lot of questions about that my red flags are going up real fast right. going, wait a second we're already separating our body from this and now we're about to Im implement something that's really really <laughs> out there <laughs> yeah. and, so and the bible talks so clearly about sin uh, yeah. begins in our mind right yeah. and but there's it seems like there's this separation mm -hmm. that we can get away with yeah one other thing just talking about um pastor ken you had kind of mentioned there's the broadness of who you're preaching to and some people some some people are very innocent and don't know i think one of the things that i do like about this topic as well for that kind of person is i think we can say like 
sex is bad, sex is bad, sex is bad, sex is bad, you get married, sex is good. Well, that messes with your head. So God created us to be sexual beings in the context of marriage. Mm. And so we have to figure out how, how do we teach this in a way that keeps it in a healthy place instead of mm -hmm. um, bad than good, because that's really confusing in yeah. a transition. Yeah. Um, and then another thing, just paying attention as you guys preach, I would say, you know, you've got little people in that room and that's got to yeah. be such a challenge. You've done a really <coughs> good job of being mm -hmm. mindful and still preaching what you need well, to What's really interesting about what you said is, you know, we let people know, like we think for sure you're, sixth graders up should be here yeah but then you make decisions and we haven't said graphic things right but one father just said to me because i turned and said you know you may not want your second or third grader there because we're not going to be saying graphic things we will say the word porn you know right and then the father said oh no my child at the school he's at he's in second grade i want my second grader hearing this mm -hmm. because yeah. what my child is hearing already as a second grader just among peers and yeah. other things so i, I just thought uh, yeah, it's challenge. It, it, like, it, I'm agreeing with you, and yeah. then the father turning going, I want my second grader hearing yeah, it. Because but, the, he wants yeah. to be the one to ask questions. Yeah. One other thought real quick, Johnny, yeah. sorry. I, I think um, talking about pursuing happiness, and we just want happiness, and I think in the world as we pursue happiness, we're, we're searching for this and that and this, and so even the confusion on sexuality, mm -hmm. and you know, you hear reports of, of people who are pursuing um different genders because they believe that will bring happiness for them and it's bringing depression mm -hmm. and um you know suicidal thoughts and things like that and i just think um while we pursue happiness when we if we pursue god we find mm -hmm. that peace we find the joy it doesn't mean that our everything good is going to happen and, mm -hmm. and everything will be easy life will be easy but um i you know i just when i hear those stories i think oh you need the Lord. That's what you're searching for, and yeah. that's so hard. One, one of the things with that that we have to continue to unpack is the stereotypes we put on gender. Mm -hmm. Like this is what a male is, this is what a female is, and then it seems that oftentimes, even in the church, we try to apply, I would say, holiness, not happiness. We try to apply holiness to like masculinity or whatever our idea is to be a man, and it's actually the opposite. You have the scriptures line up clearly, love, joy, peace, patience, Christ, Christ likeness. So if you're a boy and you like to dance, like that does not make you gay. If you read all the research, that is like the stereotype that gets put on that. You're like, no, you can be a young man, but that as you are a man needs to be applied to what already exists in God and his holiness. Same thing with little girls. You want to play sports? Awesome. You want to cook? Cool. It doesn't matter, but when you read the scriptures, you look at who Christ is and who God is and how we're called to be. Yeah. And that, when we put hard lines on, this is what a boy is, this is what a girl is, and then kids go, I don't fit in that box, therefore I need to go explore something else, another option. Mm -hmm. And that's where some of that, that detriment comes in. Yeah. And just sticking back to who God is and his character and who he calls us to be, that has to be the starting spot. And walking in grace and truth, and if, it, if that is it, then we have a lot of hope. It can be really, really good, a great gift. It's good. You know? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, just one last question. You can keep it brief uh, if you if you can and if you'd like. Um, it's really important for the church to be proactive and not be reactive. Not to just be all right. What's what's happening now? Let's try to scra let's try to scramble and try to figure out how, how to teach it. Right? We're proactive. Yeah. We're uh, trying to stay ahead of the curve and being biblical as we do so. Um, so in the coming years, what would you like to see? Um, Emmanuel uh, continue to do when it comes to the topic of Christian sexuality uh, or families? Uh, how would you guys like for families to continue engaging with this conversation? Because as we do with all series, this is not just we're done and then moving on to the next thing. We, we hope that with the theme of blessing and blessed, that it's something that we do for the year and then even continue to move forward. Uh, so how, what would you like to see in families, at Emmanuel, uh, even in Paramount, when it comes to Christian sexuality? Uh, one thing that I think is really important is that uh, we would we would be very um, honest ourselves about how we need the Lord. Mm -hmm. Fathers, mothers, pastors, leaders, how we need the Lord in appropriate places, how uh, I, I need God even further in this area, in that area. And the church would be a safe place mm -hmm to be a human who needs the Lord, and in the area of sexuality, oh, God, could you help us? Mm -hmm. And could we be open and not have to be hidden and not shamed uh, by whatever a person struggles with? An open, not shaming, but let's follow the Lord together place. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think 
at Emmanuel, we try to preach um, expository preaching as often as possible, and that just basically means you preach uh, the five verses that you're given in the specific passage. And the Bible has a lot to say about sexuality, both in the Old and the New Testament. So I just think as we preach through the Bible, if we're able to address the scriptures as they come, that's always important. And then having outlets for people in men's groups and women's groups. We have Celebrate Recovery, which is an incredible gift, 12-step programs. Um, most of our small groups, we have time of confession and repentance. And so just making sure, like Pastor Ken said, that's a safe spot for people to open up and be real and only to be encouraged, supported, and loved and uh, just keep this conversation going. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I'd love to see the conversation continue um, in the church so that we keep we keep uh, preaching truth in love with just lots of grace um, because that will help families keep the conversation open mm -hmm. and make it a normal thing to talk about um, so that it can be discussed in the right places yeah. and information can be learned in the right places. So, yeah. Yeah, I would love for, for families to remember that, that we're here to serve them. We're here to love them and to be with them and to be able to provide as much as we can tools uh, for conversations. So, cause this is really important stuff yeah. and it's, and it's hard conversations that uh, a lot of the families are willing to, to step in for this period amount of time, right? Because yeah. like, as we're talking about in church, and then we might just kind of go away. So again, agreeing with you all, we hope that this conversation can continue to go, and you at home know that you're loved by us, and we're trying to do our best to, uh, to just to remind you that God loves you as well, and mm -hmm. God wants the best for you. Uh, so one last thing, which would you choose? Oh, yes. Season tickets to your favorite sports team, Cowboys, right, Clark? Um, yeah. But they will lose every game you fan. They always do. I'm like oh, one, one in five. Uh, or luck. you can never watch your favorite team again, but they'll win every single game. Oh. I'm taking that one. I'm a real fan. I'm putting them ahead of me. If we can win, for <laughs> sure. Well, plus, the Cowboys aren't close enough for you to attend every day. Exactly. I can't play with Texas on Sundays. Yeah, I kind of got to preach. Pastor Ken, do you even care about since, this one? Since, yeah. I don't, since I don't really have a favorite team, <laughs> okay, I want them to lose all the time and have free tickets to go to games that I want to go to, and I get to watch these good players play. I would so selfishly choose season tickets. I love to go. I like baseball, so I would love to go to Angel Games. And have them lose. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally happens. with you. I'm not as tied with like a, a sports team. Yeah. I would just want to go for the for the vibe. You know, just go hang out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys. Please leave us in the comments if if you if you have anything you would like to talk about or discuss. Uh, we're here, and if you have any questions, send them our way. We love you guys. We'll see you soon.